Welcome back, folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us today in this Twinkle Tips Fridays video. Yep, we've got something up our sleeves and we want to share it with you. Hang on just a second. We'll get started. We're back, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Clyde from Pixel Pro Displays. If you haven't done yet, so consider uh, hitting the subscribe button down below. Our goal is to hit 4,000 subscriptions by the end of October, and we hope that the work that we're doing is something worthy of you hitting that subscribe button and liking the video. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started with today's little bit of a lesson. So down below, you see here in the X-Lite screen, you see two sets of arches. Now, maybe some of you don't know this, uh, the arches can be created and joined together. You can select one arch and add any number of arbitrary number of arches that you'd like to one if you'd like. And, th and it looks like this. So if you already are using this type of an arch, be prepared because there's a couple things that may be a little different for you and your use cases considering that maybe you're purchasing sequences downloading them and importing them into your layout or somebody sharing a sequence with you and how a sequence is uh, created for those arches may be a little different and may not transpose over exactly the way that you might think it does i've set up these four arches here into a group uh, i've called it arches group I set this into a group, I put this this whole arch into a group, and I called it Arch Group 2, and we're going to put some effects on these, and I'm also going to share with you a bug that I found in one of the updates that Keith has added in, and uh, hopefully this, this video will serve as kind of a bug report for it as well. So as I said, we have two different groups. We have an arch group. This arch group here is arches two, three, four, and five. So there's four individuals versus one individual that is four. So if that makes sense, I hope you all are following along with me. If we are using a group to sequence with, then you have a couple things called render styles that can change inside the group to allow differences between the way the effect is applied to the group and render styles which I've done a video go ahead and look up here above me and uh, look at that video and it will kind of walk you through a little bit of what the render styles are all about and how they will work and uh, but but you can see here that there's different ways for a render style to uh, apply there's a number of them here and what most people might consider doing is they put the single strand effect over top of a uh, arch and and it would go from left to right or right to left or from the middle or to the middle and and that's your basic kind of arch movement right that's how you sequence an arch right but what about if you have just the arch model that has four arches on it now, if you want it to go across, you have to use the per preview. But if you want each of them to do the individual thing, you have to change it to default. Now, here's the challenge. If you are copying this, and we copy this version here, however this render style is, let's say it's horizontal per model per strand. So there's, there's, there's a variation. I don't think that this is going to transpose over to, if I delete that off of there, this, because it's not in a group anymore. Now, you can't get that same look. If that's what your, the look is that you were going for in the sequence and you uh, apply that to somebody else's sequence, it's not going to go through. So I thought, oh, okay, no big deal. What I'll do is I will go ahead and I'll put the arch group in or the the set of arches into arch group two, and we'll go ahead. We'll copy this again, and we'll see if we can't get it to do exactly the same thing. Well, in this case, it does in fact work, but is that for every single case? And sometimes it's not. So here's uh, here's vertical per model per strand. Let's try copying and pasting that in there as well. That seems to work pretty good. Now, if we change this to default model as a pixel, you can see it bounce across the screen there. Uh, if we copy that and paste that over top of the group itself, you can see 
it's just flashing them all. It's tre it's treating the one model as an entire pixel, which it's one model. It's not four individual models. So there's a couple of things that you might have to do now. If you haven't uh, if you haven't jumped ahead in your head, and we talked about submodels last week, if if you haven't jumped ahead yet to realize that maybe it's a good idea to come in here and create a submodel, you could create submodels with arches one, arch two, arch three, and arch four, and you can count them out left to right, and then bam, that pretty much solves your your challenge whenever it comes to the, applying those render buffers and having it look exactly as the original uh, sequence are created or intended now like I said sometimes sometimes this is going to do exactly the same thing as the intended original arch that may have been set up like this if your arches are set up like this I highly recommend uh, creating a group that if you're mapping from a certain vendor who perhaps doesn't sequence the way you do to set it up the way they've done it then go ahead and use the uh, submodels to create your group with and then you can do your mapping and it should work just fine all right so that moves me on to the next point and the next point is the buffer stagger now what is buffer stagger well buffer stagger is an addition in x lights that is shown over here under the buffer and what the buffer stagger does is it varies the start time by i don't know if it's milliseconds or 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 whatever but uh it, keith set this up so that it staggers the start time of the effect across a group of effects so and it, it, it also is only only available with certain uh, specific render styles. And the render styles that are useful for this should be the horizontal stack and vertical stack. Now, what I'm about to show you is copy and pasted into X Lights from a different layout, from a different sequence that I created on my laptop. And why am I telling you this? Because this is the bug that I have found, and I'm sharing it with you guys, so that you know that it's it's there. It's an option. I mean, you you might be able to go in and hard code uh, or edit the sequence with that buffer setting, uh, so that you can utilize it. But uh, it, it, for whatever reason, on this computer, I'm unable to get it to work. But let me show you what it is and what it does. One of my things that I wanted to do and it, to be able to do with a sequence was to um, let me let me come over here put this down and we'll make this a little bit smaller and we'll put the arch effect or the single strand effect that is and we'll put that on all of these here okay and what I wanted to be able to do is I wanted to be able to easily cascade an effect across a, a group but the only way to do that was to create the cascade at the model level. And it would be really nice to be able to have the cascade ability at the group level. And so this is what uh, Keith added in uh, as uh, a special edition under the buffer, which is buffer stagger. But unfortunately, it doesn't appear to work exactly as I had intended. So if I come back up here, and you can get to see what what this looks like so you see how it staggers the start time that's what I want to be able to do from a group level and that is exactly what buffer stagger does now unfortunately whenever you have vertical stack select here uh, or horizontal stacked it does something similar but you can see that they're staggered so this one starts and then it cascades over to this one and it cascades to here and you can see that as the effect rolls across it now I don't know why the buffer stagger won't open up and let me use this it does work it, it, it appears to work with the buffer stagger even though it's deselected it's grayed out I can't change it here but it is a function in XSlice and I wanted to share it with you but it's also reporting a bug and I'm going to turn this video in so that maybe the developers can have a look at it and figure out exactly what the challenge is well guys that's everything for me here at pixel pro displays this week by the way this weekend this is our last week and for our Labor Day sale, I'm going to throw the flyer up in front of you. If you appreciate the things that we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club this weekend between now and September 11th, 2023 by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. 
you can see on the flyer here that we have a $100 off the annual PPD Sequence Club membership. This is a fantastic time to join. It's probably one of the last sales we're gonna have. But also we have for existing club members, any sequence in the store that is a pro layout sequence is on sale for $30 off. That's a hell of a deal. And we also have for people who are not in the club, if you wanna get a great price on an awesome sequence, we have over 20 songs in the store on our original layout sequence that are on sale for $30 a piece. You can look for the little sale icon and find those in the store all throughout our Christmas and other sequences page. Guys, thanks for joining me today. It's been wonderful chatting with you. We hope you enjoy these videos. If you did, give us that like and the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. We are going for 4,000 subscribers by the end of October. So thank you for joining us. If you have any any suggestions for videos, put them in the comments section down below. It really means a lot that you're here with us this week. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. This is Clyde Lindsay signing out. We will see you in the next video. Thanks and take care.